Welcome back to Visual Anthology's Physical Inventory Training. In this fifth chapter, we'll be concentrating on doing manual physical inventories. There are two primary ways you might do a manual inventory, and that's either by doing hand counts or possibly using your point of sale barcode scanners. Now in my system, I've set up two possible situations, and we'll hit those one at a time. So here we have two different physical inventories. One is a partial physical inventory of the children's section, and I intended on doing hand counts for everything. In fact, on this one, I did choose to use the Edit by Exception option to save me a little time because all I have to do is go in and mark the items who's who have a discrepancy, who have an exception amount. I don't have to change or modify any of the ones whose counts were exactly correct. The second example that we'll get to in a moment deals with doing a partial physical inventory on the technical books, but since they're close to the cash register, I'll simply bring those titles up to the counter and scan them using my point of sale scanners. Let's talk about the first example. And actually, when I've created this physical inventory, when I do plan on doing hand counts and using edit by exception, or not, I can still put all those quantities in, there is a report I should print out and give to my staff so they can use that when they're writing down what they've counted for when they bring it back to me to finalize those numbers. There are two kinds of reports you might use. There is one that we've always intended to use, but I've had other stores bring up that another report works just as well, so I'll show you both of those options. The first report, the more commonly one that we've planned for, is in the reports menu and that is the stock check report. The stock check report is something you might use when you want to print a particular section, maybe the babies and toddlers section, and perhaps we don't normally shelve our units by, or excuse me, our shelves by department and then section. More likely though, they are by author and maybe title after that. So here I've chosen my stock check report to give me only the babies and toddlers section. If I used bin numbers, I could use those. And then I've chosen how I want those records sorted. So we'll do a print preview. So here is our stock check report. You can see it's sorted by author and title, and it's only the babies and toddlers section. Here's a space for me to write the amount I've counted in. Here's the amount on hand, at least the moment I printed that report to help give me a comparison. There's the ISPN, the title, the author, and so forth. Plenty of information for me to be able to find that title on the shelf and note how many I counted. The other report that other stores have reported using is the inventory status report. Now this wasn't ever really intended to be used just for the physical inventory, but it works pretty well. In this case, perhaps my inventory is a little more complex, it's a little older, a little bit bigger. I want to make sure I get a report of just the items I really care about. So when I do an inventory status report in per pertaining to doing a physical inventory by hand, I can choose to do one particular department. I can choose to do I can choose to do one particular section, in this case the preschool section. And I can choose to sort primarily by description or maybe by author, whatever it is that I wanted to sort by. Further, because I might have quite a large inventory that's spanning over several years, I can choose to have it only print items who at least have an on hand more than zero. Maybe I have some older titles that have been around for ages that I don't have any on hand on right now. I don't really even care about them, so I don't want them showing up on the paper report. Further, I can go on and I can say, you know what, I even only want to look at the titles who've only been received in the last couple of years. So I can put in a date as well to limit the amount of items that are going to be printed. I also may want to use the use condensed form option. If I use this with it, if I have it checked, it'll give me one line per record instead of the wrapping you might sometimes see. So I'll choose to use condensed, and now we can print preview this. So here is our inventory status report, slightly modified to fit our physical inventory a little bit better. Now you'll notice that because this wasn't meant to be used for the physical inventory, 
we don't have a space provided for writing down your on-hand amounts, or the amounts you count, rather, but there's plenty of space, really, to fit that number in if you need. So once you've printed either of the two reports and your staff has gone out and done those counts and are beginning to come back, this is where you'll start coming into your physical inventory and start putting in those quantities by hand. So in this case, I had counted some already. I had posted some of my updates already. But let's go up to the total counts here, and we'll find some items that need some attention yet. Now, let me set up an example that you might run into. Let's say that at one point we had found six out of eight of the Everything Potty Training book. And in fact, we'll post that. And let's say that we have found a couple of the Watch Me Grow title. So at some stage, I may be going through and doing F8 Find Line to enter in the ISBN of those items. So maybe I'm reading right off my paper, or perhaps I've got two people in which one person's driving the keyboard and the other person's reading off the paper report. So I'll go ahead and I'll type in the first item that I'm looking for. And that's this Baby Steps title. So let's say I found all 10 copies. Enter line. And now we can see the 10 copies counted. But let's say on the next one, I found two more of, say, the Everything Potty Training book. So I'll go through and I'll punch in that number or scan it in, whatever I'm going to do. Notice, and this is something you're going to want to watch for, I've already counted six, and I found two more. In this case, because I've already got the six recorded in the total count, all I have to do is change my count quantity to two. When I go through and I post my next batch, or master PI record here, it will simply take the two from the count quantity column and add them to the total count, giving that eight. Now there's also another situation where perhaps I haven't posted my PI in a little while, but I find a couple more on another shelving unit. So in fact, let me punch in that number of a good example here. So here's one. Watch me grow. Notice that I had thought I had five, but I have counted three already. So you want to watch and make sure that just because I found two more, I don't want to hit just two. I need to increase this guy because I don't have anything in the total count column. I had three. I found two more. So that means I found all five. So I can just say, I found my five. That's the basics of modifying any item. You've got F8 find line. You can do a type ahead where you click on any record in the title column and type in the first couple of letters. And you're not really going to see those letters appear on the screen, but you're going to see your focus, the highlighted record, jump to the first few records that match what you punched in. In this case, I typed in ADD. So now I could go in and I can manually change that item. Maybe I found one more than I thought I had. Of course, don't forget to save your changes. Maybe print every so often. Maybe post your update every so often. But that's about it for doing hand counts when using the Edit by Exception option. I'd like to go to the second example here now, which in this case is PI number six. And this is a partial physical inventory using just the computer or technical books. And in this case, I plan on using my point of sale scanners because that section of items is really just to the right of the cash register. Now, in this case, I don't really care so much about printing a report. But I do care about making sure that the items I'm bringing up are in those sections that I've defined up here. In fact, um, I've brought a pile of books up. And the first thing I want to do is to put this in scan mode. 
Now, one thing important to, to know about doing a physical inventory using your point of sale scanners, you can only have one person working on a PI at any given time. Like a purchase order, you can't have several different people on several different machines working on the same PI. If you do that, you'll simply end up overwriting each other's changes, something you probably want to avoid. So with the, using the point of sale scanners, I've brought up a pile of books. The first thing I need to do is to put this thing in scan mode. So go to actions, go to scan, and now notice it says scan mode up here. And this button, this field down here is now changed to a green color to indicate I'm in scan mode. So I have not used the edit by exception option when I was creating this PI. So notice there's nothing in count, there's nothing in total count. I haven't done anything with this PI at this point. So I can start scanning in those items that I've got on the counter in front of me. And there I just scan the data communications title. Notice that we thought we had five on hand. I just scanned one, so the count quantity is now one. Still showing a discrepancy of four, but since I probably have a few other copies of that item, I'll just keep scanning them. One scan is one quantity counted. So I can keep doing that until I've got all the ones accounted for or I realize there's a discrepancy. So every so often I can just keep going through and scanning those items. Of course, don't forget to save periodically. Um, if you decide that you need to save and maybe go back and print a report, you'll notice that will take you out of scan mode. It's easy enough to get back in scan mode just by going back up to the Actions menu. Clicking on any grid item in the grid also takes you out of scan mode, but again, relatively easy to get back into scan mode and start scanning those items that you've brought to that front counter. There is also another option that you can use instead of scan mode or doing F8 to find line. If you take your mouse and just take your mouse cursor and click on any record in that title column like I showed you before, just type in the first couple of letters. You can see that there's the surprise title that I typed in SUR. I'm now sitting on the first item that meets that. I can now put in the count quantity that I counted manually and enter that line. Of course, don't forget to save and post your changes every so often. The ideas that I've shown you here also apply if you are doing the portable rental scanners and you have a series of items that don't have a barcode or their barcode is heavily damaged, just like doing a manual PI, you'll go to your open record and make your changes in that record. That's about it for doing hand counts or doing handling items that have no barcode. Uh, of course, as before, there's other chapters you should have reviewed to, to get you finished with this process. Um, the next chapter, chapter six, talks about wrapping up that physical inventory and doing that final adjustment.